Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Royello. And Sashimi. And we are here today with our puppies in Monster Hunter Rise. They've got random names, but mine's Arthur. What's yours? <laughs> uh, Masamune. Oh, you got Masamune. So yeah. we got Arthur and Masamune instead of like Arthur and Excalibur. That's kind of cool. <laughs> anyway, on to what we're going to be talking about. The same with Monster Hunter World. You guys know us. We have to cover endemic life and critters in the world. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Yeah, this is based on what we've seen in the demo so far, so we don't know how it's going to be different in the full game, but I uh, just thought we'd discuss the differences that we see so far in Rise. Yep, the biggest difference we see with Endemic Life this time around is that it seems like the monsters, um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to capture them. Hopefully in the main game you'll be able to capture them and take, take them home like we could in Monster Hunter World. Yeah, I really hope so. But each, it actually seems that we have, just like in Monster Hunter World, different endemic life that occupy different areas. Uh, they each have a use in the world, like they actually seem to have replaced a lot of the old gadgets that we used in World, you know, like the Challenger's Mantle, as well as, say, the Healing Stations, uh, the Affinity uh, Booster, all those. So, in this one, we're actually breaking these critters up into categories, and this is our first of three videos. This one is going to cover the category of blight monsters. So, these are going to be endemic life that you can capture and then use against the monster to give them blights. So, those are actually going to be all the beetles. We're going to be covering the fire beetle, the mud beetle, the thunder beetle, and the snow beetle. So these creatures are actually called Hunter Helpers, and what you do need to know is when you go to your menu in the Helper Cage, you can see we've got five slots, meaning you can hold five Hunter Helpers monsters. Yep. And once you pick them up, they'll just like show up in your inventory as usable items, and you can drop them. Yep, exactly. Now, if you want to locate these, they actually made it really easy. If you bring up a detailed version of your map by hitting the Y button, on your menu if you once you're here you can actually see all these icons if you hit the X button it'll bring up a list of hunting helpers so we're gonna go to like the mud beetle here when you click that it'll filter out everything on the map except for the mud beetle who as you can see is up right near the one of area 10 so we are gonna pop on up there and grab ourselves a mud beetle all right here we are near area 10 Looks like our buddy's right here on the shore. So we will pick him up. What the mud beetles do is they will put water blight onto your enemies. So now we just gotta go find us a monster. It looks like there's one just to the south. So let's go poke him. All right, here we are with, looks like we got an Arzuros and uh, the Azuchi here. So you wanna go into your items bar and select our new buddy. There's mud beetle. And you just use it. Totally did not mean to ride our new buddy here. <laughs> that even happened. So when the mud beetle hit, there's a there's actually a message that comes up really quick that'll let you know the hide of the monster has been softened. Arzuros is probably the thickest hide in the demo. So just using the mud beetle will give him water blight. You can see the water coming off of him there. He is now water blighted and his defense is lowered, so Time to get after the next beetle. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up our detailed map and find the next beetle. Looks like it's gonna be the Thunder Beetle, and he is up just south at the very bottom of the number nine. Alrighty, here's our Thunder Beetle. Lucky us, we've got the Arzuros just outside the gate down here. So we're gonna go pop him with this beetle. What the Thunder Beetle does is really good for uh, blade users. If you are not a blunt weapon user, you can actually hit them with the Thunder Beetle. This gives them Thunder Blight. And I missed it. All right, so Sash can throw the Thunder this time. She'll probably actually hit him. Let's see, there we go. So whenever they have the Thunder Blight on them, you'll see these electric shocks on them. While that is up, if you hit them in the head with your bladed weapon, it doesn't have to be a blunt weapon, but as long as they are thunder blighted, it is possible to KO and dizzy the monster with even a bladed instrument. So, moving on to the next one. The next one is going to be the snow beetle. Let's see what they can do. 
All right, now that we've gotten away from our man-eating bear, we're gonna go to our map, check out the snow beetle. Looks like he is just over to the east side, a little bit south and west of area three. Sash is almost there. All right, while well, Sash is having fun with all of our Jagras friends, I'm gonna grab up our snow beetle here. I don't know why he's here amongst all this grass. <laughs> Where did he get it? I don't know, but it is the demo, so let's go hit something with some snow that we got from the grass. All right, so here we are at the Azuchi. Okay. And they ran away. Now that we found him again, we'll let you look at his animations here for a moment. Just so you can see the speed, you guys are probably all used to his speed by now. So in the case of any kind of a fast monster, if you're having trouble keeping up with their actions, the snow beetle can actually do a really good job of keeping them in check. Now that we've hit him with the snow beetle, you'll see the ice blight is on him, and he's much slower. His animations have slowed down a lot. Very easy to keep up with. This can also make a, trick or, uh, a much trickier monster much more easily handled because they're very slow. Yeah, it'd also be handy for when they uh, become enraged. Slow them back down to normal speeds. Yeah, take them off fast forward and put them a little bit more on pause. So. Yeah. Lasts quite a while, as you can see, so it can really make a tough fight uh, easier, especially until you're used to the, the monster's moveset. So moving on, the next one is the Fire Beetle. Let's go find one. And last up on our list is the Fire Beetle. If we filter him, we can see that he's just southwest of areas 5 and 4 on the map. So let's go grab that little bugger. Oh, he worked it so hard. Again, no idea where he found explosives. Yeah, is it lava or explosive <laughs> material? I guess he's just been packing the rocks up here together. It's a demo. Let's go find something to harass with fire. And we've found our fire buddy, so all yours. So Sasha's hit him with the fire beetle. As you can see, he's now taking a periodic 15 damage. So that's pretty much what the fire does. It just does DOT on him. Uh, this can be handy if you're in a fight and you just want to speed it up a little bit and you happen by a fire beetle on the way. Uh, if you needed to uh, do a little bit of extra damage to help you in solo, there's all kinds of uses for these guys, so who can't use a little extra damage? Alright, back to camp and we will finish up. Alrighty guys, and there you have it. This is our first video for the Endemic Lives. Uh, this is the only one where we're actually going to cover how to find them on the map and everything. So that way our next few videos who that actually have more Endemic Lives aren't going to just take forever. Uh, so we will see you on the next ones. The next video, video number two, will be covering damage and status category Endemic Lives. So look forward to that. If this one helped you out, check that one out as well. And we will see you for that one. As far as likes, subs, all that stuff, that's up to you. What we ask for around here, though, is if it's within your means, consider adopting or help or rescuing an animal. ASPCA.org, PetFinder.com. You can also Google your local animal rescue and adoption options. If you can't bring an animal home, there's other ways you can help them out. You can also go volunteer and still spend time with the guys, or you can donate money, or blankets, clothes, sheets, office supplies, all kinds of stuff. Google your local shelters, see what they need. You probably got something they could use. Yep, so if you got love to show, love to give, there's plenty of ways to give it and show it. And unfortunately, guys, there's plenty of animals out there who could use that love. So show them what you got. And speaking of love, we love you. Remember, buy your fun, not your fam. Adopt, don't shop. And we will see you next time. Happy hunting.